the leaderboard is closed off to the public, to all the anglers, so we won't know until tomorrow. But as of right now, I'm leading the event. And I'm just freaking astonished. What an eventful, fun Ironman kayak series. I want to do this again and, and I'm thirsty for a win. I'm super thirsty for a win. Man, I love this. I love this. So, <coughs> Dominic Dome. Let's go. All right. <clears throat> Dominic. Man, you are on fire right now, bro. Taking a second place in this kind of event. And I know that you've been putting in a lot of work, dude. And I know, I, I mean, we stayed at the house together. And, and after your day one, uh, I remember I got to... Welcome to American Bass and KBF practice day one on San Vicente. Ah, uh, proud sponsored by Hook Fishing. No, I'm just kidding. So we admit, uh, so we officially made it to stop number three. San Vicente Reservoir has roughly about 25 miles of shore, so there's gonna be plenty of bank for fishermen to capitalize on this largemouth bass. I only went one other time to this lake. I've never been to this lake before, other than that time, which was about two weeks ago. Today is the official practice day, and tomorrow is the official second day practice day, and Saturday and Sunday is the main event. So we'll see what we can do. I'll check in with you guys later. Check in with you guys on the water. Peace. Peace. Let's <laughs> okay, start the intro, bro. Start the intro. Let's, the intro. Let's go, man. I gotta crack over the cold one in the morning, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sponsored by rain. Sponsored by rain. Let's go. Oh, jeez. What a crazy start. So, at the beginning of the day, I was gonna unload my kayak on the top of the launch ramp and uh, what happened is I unstrapped everything but then I changed my mind and then before I know it my kayak was on the ground fell on to some soil thank goodness uh, my kayak's okay but you know my seat actually is broken so I'm at like an angle and I'll be tilted the whole entire time in this uncomfortable seating position on day one but you know what who cares let's just go fishing let's have a good time and see if our fish are still there from two weeks ago and yeah good morning to you guys anyways I'll catch you guys later I'll check in with you guys later peace So generally when I fish day one practice events, I want to throw moving baits. I want to find active fish and uh, if I can catch a fish with a reaction bait, I'm going to do so. So I'm throwing this jerk bait by uh, Mega Bass 110. This area is one of the main lake points and it has current flowing right into it all the right conditions uh, there's wind there's current there's a lot of bait that's funneling to this main lake point and I believe there was a lot of post spawn fish in the area uh, last time I checked there's a lot of spawners and First this was about day, guys. two weeks later so I imagine that there's a lot of post spawners staged up on this main lake point um, and yeah there's a couple fish on there and there's definitely other followers 12 and 3 quarters guys 12 and 3 quarters Another goal of mine on day one practice is to find the bigger fish community. Uh, went around the corner of where I caught that first fish, caught another one, but honestly, 
none of these fish really impress me. I don't think these fish would actually help me in a tournament to finish in a top three, uh, be in the top three contention. Adventure. So after making a longer run down the lake, decided to check out this point that I saw four weeks ago where I landed a um, pretty decent fish. And one of the biggest reasons why I throw, throw uh, a jerkbait for me to bass one time is uh, I really check out the water clarity and I break down a lake based on the water clarity. If it's clear, usually a jerkbait will work. I wouldn't throw a, a bait like a jackhammer or very dark black That's and blue colors. I usually stick with natural colors, bluegill, green pumpkin, watermelon, etc. So um, that's one of the ways I break down a lake is checking out the it's water clarity once I get there. Heck. I, I, I. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. It's not worth it. That skinny guy. Well, he's not that skinny. But he's pulling up shallow. He's a pale fish. So when you got pale fish like that, that means there's a wave of bucks coming in. So let's measure this one up. See what it see what the length gives us. Yeah, I'll take I'll take five of these. Fifteen and three quarters, guys. Fifteen and three quarters. I'll take a lot of these. So I really wanted to pick up something different, see if the bass were willing to hit top water, see if it was a really good bite on a wake bait. So I picked up this rat my buddy gave me, Arnold, and uh, decided to give it a try, but I didn't get no followers, I didn't get a bit, so I decided to put that down and try the A-Rig. And um, I got a lot of followers, but I got nothing to commit. I think the hardware was just a little bit too much during this warmer temperature and uh, <clears throat> switched up to a tiny little 2.8 Kitek with a ball head and I believe it was like a, it's in between between an electric shad and bluegill flake uh, sort of, but I, I lost the fish instantly. That could have been a tree actually, but um, <clears throat> man, these trees, they're crazy um, because they have those muscles and really nick your line so I wanted to drop down and in, in the line diameter so I went to a six pound test FC sniper for this 2.8 Kitek and uh, it paid off I got bit more often than uh, throwing it on eight pound test I think eight pound test that kind of kills the action of it um, and then as well as this the the rate of fall I believe it's a little bit more natural how it falls with the six pound test. So what I'm doing here is I'm deliberately casting short distances and focusing on my live scope, making sure there's fish in the area before I actually take a cast to be more effective. Can't find the big ones, 12 incher, but at least it came off of a different bait. It came off of the Kitek 2.8 with a 1 8 ounce. I had to drop line size to get bit on that one. Yeah, I just broke off on the drop shot, so I'm gonna tie on another one. I'm gonna do a one aught rebarb. Stick with eight pound test. I don't want to mess anything up. I don't want to lose any fish. I went five pound test for open water for the Kitek, but that's not what I'm willing to do for this. 
I think I just broke one off of the fish, but find out. All right, let's see. Capitalize on that bite again. Oh, fish coming over, inspecting it. After I said I only throw reaction baits usually on day one, I spent a short time drop shotting, figuring out if fish would bite right away. But I, like I said, I'll, I'm gonna pick up my jerk bait and I'm gonna f find active feeding fish. So didn't want to get sucked up into that finesse game. So I picked up my my jerk bait and started throwing it again and hooked into a decent one. Um, but unfortunately, this is what happens. God. Uh, that's a bummer. I just broke off my lure. What sucks is it's in a fish's mouth. Oh, that sucks for him. What I do a lot of the times when I'm out here on practice is uh, look for submerged structure like brush, trees, underwater that no one else could see. That's less pressure that most boaters would just go over and fish the bank. But um, right here, I'm actually, I saw a submerged tree and a fish on top of these trees setting up to eat bait as it crosses that submerged tree. So I gave it a couple twitches and then I saw that fish follow it, slowed it down, did a twitch, pause, twitch, pause, and then I set the hook. Some of the time, I like to actually set up shallow and fish deeper. Because most of the time, boats are are going over these spots they're not really fishing them effectively and so i'm just thinking why not take advantage of that uh, focus on deeper fish focus on females that are either pushing up to the shallows staging up or going back to the secondary spots in deeper water to eventually go to um, to their comfortable spots uh, during the summer or... to feed and feed up until fall and then just you know live out into the deep about 30 feet i emphasize so much don't stick multiple fish in one area if you plan on going back so usually if i'm catching something over 15 inches and a big fish at this lake is approximately around 18 and 19, I'm gonna move on. Now, if it's a fish that I normally wouldn't submit during a tournament, if I was in contention for first place, like a 12 or 13 incher, I'm definitely gonna keep on fishing until I find a 15 in that area. And if I don't find something bigger in that area, I'm definitely gonna leave. If I catch 12s and 13s, 12s and 13s all day in one area, Holy sure, the cow. bike could be addicting. You would think that That's it would actually turn out and you would be able to possibly filter time. maybe uh, multiple 12 and 13s to get to an 18 guys. or 19. But um, sometimes that's just not the case. I'd rather keep on fishing on uh, until I get the right bite. And then once I catch something worth stopping at during the tournament, then I'll stop fishing in that area immediately and uh, save it. After hooking into this fish, I had to keep it down. So a lot of the times you don't see me really hooting, hollering and yelling during a fish catch during practice because there's boats around me. Everybody's practicing during official practice day one to figure out the bite. And I don't want to be making a, I don't want to be shouting out and giving away any spots or anything like that. And uh, this fish was decent. It's it was around. Actually, I don't remember how long it was, but 
this area is really active. Like this one spot, I caught a fish. Across, across from it, very short distance, I caught another fish. And then you'll see maybe two minutes later, you'll see me catch another one, like in a short distance. All this was with a, within at least, at most, uh, three or 400 feet. And uh, so I told myself, I need to think about where I'm gonna end up going during this tournament because I don't wanna go too far and I don't wanna spread out my spots too much. So that's one of the things that I think about during tournament and practice day is how can I maximize my time putting my spots closer together so that I could have more time to fish and I could just focus on fishing and not so much where are the big fish? Where are the big fish? I, already, I should already figure that out during practice. Figuring this out will only make me more effective on the water and give me a higher probability that I will stick a bigger limit that will put me in contention in the top three. Like I said, there's no reason to have 12 inch spots and 13 inch spots because tw I'm afraid, you know, 12 and 13 inches very rarely will help you get a top three finish. Only if the bite is really, really tough, a 12 or 13 inch fish will go a long way. But I'd say about 80%, 90% of the time, 12 inch fish won't help you get into the top three. So um, when you do go out there, keep in mind that Whatever's catching bigger fish, even if it's a drop shot, a shaky head, a spinning rod, just do it because it doesn't make you a better angler to throw a Mega Bass 110, Junior, or Plus 2, or Swim Bait if you're catching smaller fish. There really is no reason to do that. Uh, if you want to become a better bass fisherman or a better trout, I mean, not trout fisherman, <laughs> better tournament fisherman, you do what it takes to catch bigger fish, longer fish, even if it comes to dropping down to four and a half inch worm. This day was a good day. This was an example of showing you guys, look, I could drop shot and catch her an 18 inch fish. And I can throw a jerk bait all day and catch 15 fish. Um, I can catch multiple fish, but only bringing in 12 to 15 inch fish all day. Well, that's it. That's a wrap for day one practice day for the American Bath KBF. San Vicente event. See you guys soon.